Yes, you know what it is. Jason Williams is here. How are you, my brother? What's going on, Flex? First of all, number love for you, brother. You Thank look you. like a million dollars. Thank you. Thank you I Lord. feel like you got a million in your pocket right now. <laughs> my ex-wife might have a million. I, I got token money. <laughs> make that too. My ex-wife has. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, amazing to see you. Thank you. Lovely to see you, man. I've been watching. Uh, you know, Mike Kaiser's been keeping me abreast of all the great things you've been doing, and um. You know, I, I kind of want to start beginning, beginning. Go ahead. Beginning. So, before St. John's, mm -hmm. where you played ball, yep. the Queens. Mm -hmm. But before that, was it Christ the King? Yeah, I went to Powell Memorial before that. Okay. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Len Elmore went, and then even Chris Mullen went there for a while. And then it closed, the Catholic Church sold it, and then I went to Christ the King High School. So, this has to be what? Maybe, is this 86, 88? Okay, it's 88. Yeah. Okay, but you're originally from, is it South Carolina? Yeah, that's what my uh, Born and raised. basketball card says, but I'm from the Low East Side. Okay, yeah. but where are you, where, where are you, where, but but born, are you born there and, and born then moved here? Born and raised there to about six years in the uh, Six years in the old. East side, and then went down to South Carolina for about two or three years. You know, that school system. I went there, got skipped in the second grade, never went okay. to the fourth grade, got early. left back twice in the fifth grade. <laughs> My father, oh hell no, boy! We gotta get back on ninety five. <laughs> so is it? So is that? Um, where are your parents originally from? My mom is from Brooklyn, and my okay. dad is from Harlem. Okay. Yeah, because through South Carolina, he used to own that gas station on one hundred fifty first Street and Seventh Avenue. Now it's a car wash from Shaft. We owned that for forty one years. We had a yeah. tractor trailer company, and we did construction the whole time. I I absolutely know that gas <laughs> station. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then. Now, I, I, if I cor remember correctly in the book, right. I mean, you did talk. Your father had passed, and I know you had, you had, you had talked right. a, a lot about that. When did when did he pass? He passed in two thousand and nine, and that's when I said, "Hey, man, I can't do this no more. Let's get this trial on uh -huh. for this accident, uh, and let's go to court and let's get it done. Let's get take this plea deal, and that's that, man." Yeah. Well, so uh, uh, no, I'm I'm still yep. back at St. Yep. John's. Okay. So St. John's now. I mean, you killing them out here. Yeah, no doubt. I love it, man. I love it in front of the home team. Killing them. Yeah, man. Now, I, I mean, I, let me tell you something, too. I'll tell you a good St. John story. Mm -hmm. So one time, Flex, you know, I couldn't get in the game. They had this bum playing in front of me called Marco Baldi. They got him from Italy, seven foot two. So I was like, hey, Yo, so I had all my boys coming. I said, hey, man, when you come to the game, right, start chanting, we want Williams, we want Williams, put you in the game. So the second half came in, and I, I looked back, had about 20 of my boys, right, uh -huh. and they started chanting, we want William. We want William. We want William. Coach Connor Seck, about 70 years old at the time, he goes, Williams, said, get over here. I said, yeah, ran down the table. Said, yeah, coach, what you want me to do? He said, son, I want you to take your ass into the stands with your friends because obviously they need you more than we do. <laughs> uh, you want to kill him, right? Yeah, that's the last time I took a shortcut in my life, man. <laughs> Forget it. That was it. And so now, this, has, so this is like 88. Yeah, this yeah, this eighty eight. So now you get to being drafted. Now I want to see if I got my history right. Mm -hmm. Was it was it the Suns who yeah. drafted you? Yeah, but this is the kept. My my father went. We didn't go to Madison Square Garden because I didn't know where I was going. I could went from anywhere from five to twenty five. So I brought my dad to Coach Connor's sec office, and all my dad heard was five, and he old Southern man for South Carolina brick mason. So number five, with number five, the Miami Heat pick. Marvin kissed my father, just yeah. I said, no, Dad, that, that ain't us. That ain't us. He, he said, but he said five. I said, no, we can go anywhere from five. So he said, he said, don't worry about it, Dad. We be next. <laughs> Number seven came. Number seven pick, uh, Willie Bird. Oh, just, don't worry, about it. Dad. They ain't next. We got to about number ten. He was looking down, I looked back at him, and he says, don't worry about it, son, you be next. We got different number 13, then the Knicks pick at 17. Uh -huh. He heard the New York Knicks, and he knew I played the St. John's. Hi. Like, oh, yeah. And the number 17 pick, the New York Knicks pick, Jay, my father, yeah, I knew he was going to make it. Rod Mustaf, my father sat back down. <laughs> I looked back at my daddy, right, and my daddy looked at, and I took a double take, right, I looked back forward, and I snuck back to look at him again. He told my mom, I told you this boy ain't going to never be shit. <laughs> he going to have me lay a brick the rest of my life. Ain't nobody going to pick his dumb ass. He flicked it, I tell you. <laughs> 
<laughs> nuts, right? <laughs> and this is like 90, right? Yeah, I think 90, this, this man, is 90. 1990. This is 1990. Yeah. So I think that, so it's the Suns, and you, the, the, but some way you ended up on the 76ers. Yeah, I got, I got drafted by the Suns. And, and the day I got drafted, I was in that same arena. I already heard my dad curse me out. And then it, I knew on the 22nd pick I was going with Willis Reed with the Nets. So they was like, number 21, the Phoenix Suns pick, Jason Williams. And I was like, I don't know what y'all jumping up, bro. I ain't going home. out there. This ain't nothing out there but some redneck pickup drive, no teeth in there, how my son's bitches. <laughs> you say you and, got they, and they had an arena. And they booed my ass in the arena and started a riot. And then the mayor, uh, the governor, why? Because came they, on. But wait, they, but because they didn't want you to come. No, they I mean, wanted me they to wanted come. They wanted you to but play when there. I said they was nothing but some swamp running. You know, no teeth in their hand. They found out you said that. Yeah, they was all live in the arena in Phoenix while we draft was going on because they knew they was gonna get a good oh, pick. Oh, Christ. Yeah. So then the, ma- the governor came on with a state emergency, saying that man's a racist. We don't want him here. I go to Phoenix right now to play golf. With Charles uh-huh. Barkley, I get off the plane, they still boo. They don't forget. They still boo my ass. So what did? So then they? How did? Yeah. How did you get to the seventy sixes? Charles Barkley traded for me. He was like, "Man, I gotta have that guy." Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then Do we, you and Barkley still have a relationship? Yeah, man. To talk and is a good dude, man. He is really a good dude. He doesn't, you know. He does some crazy stuff. I enjoy him. As yeah, a but you know, t- man, that's terrible. That's terrible. But he got a good heart, man. He really does. So, so he was instrumental in getting you there. Yes. Were you happy when you got there? I was happy until he told me, see, now, once I got to the league, I didn't find out that, like, what do you do after practice? So we only practice an hour and a half. I was like, all right, Charles, what we do? He go, uh, what you mean what we do? He said, go home. And he, we go, I'll just follow him, and we'll go out to the bar all night. Uh-huh. And, and then the next day, come into practice, and he'll come in with a McDonald's sandwich, Right, just the pancakes, and then he'll put the sausage in it with butter and syrup and roll it up like a tortilla, and right, and just go on the stationary bike and ride one mile an hour and be yelling at everybody, y'all better run the floor, you sorry sons of bitches, and uh, pancake be spitting out his my poop. That's why we can't win a game. Y'all don't want to practice hard. So he had me all messed up. I tell you another story. Who? This, is, this is a long story, but you got to tell. Oh, you, we you got gotta, time. Hey, so at the end of the season, I looked at him. Now we doing bad with money because I didn't know nothing about taxes. So I made 500000 my first year, and I went, I thought I had 500000 I went and bought my mama a house, my daddy a house, a car, and my daddy a car. I was going to spend all that five hundred, right? So I was like, all right, it's getting down. So the playoffs had no come. account at that no time. No account. No account at that time, you know? None. So at the end of the season, I ain't got no money coming in. So I look over at my dad, right? And I said, uh, all right, well, uh, no, I look at Charles Barkley. I said, Charlie, man, how much we going to make for the playoffs? He said, oh, man, young blood. About 55, that ain't tub, right? I said, nah, 55, that's good. That put me back in, hold me over the summer. So I went back, I got back back to Louis' side. I said, come on, JB, what's up, man? All my boys. I said, get in the car, get his limo, we're going to Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Everybody, we're going to go look for my nephews. I took 17 people to Puerto Rico. And this when I knew I was in trouble. When we got back on the plane, for, I seen everybody with all these drinks. I said, man, I ain't even see the flight attendant. Where y'all get them drinks? They said, Jay, you ain't gonna believe this shit, man. He said, every time in the room, we drink up all that stuff in the refrigerator, and they just come replace it back for free. No. They all had pillowcases. I was like, no! Man, I screamed from Puerto Rico, from San Juan, all the way back, man. To, oh. So these are your friends. These are my friends. Have no They don't understand. They don't understand. So we get the bill, right? Uh, and I, I'm just, I'm not worrying about it. I've never done nothing like this. Took 17 people to Puerto Rico. So my father, we only had two bills, the mortgage, and then we had the uh, American Express bill. So my dad come running up the house, and he paid. He can't even read. He can barely write. So he come up, and he had on his wife beat a big belly. You can hear him coming up and saying, Jay, Jason, Jason, wake up, boy, wake up. He go, what? Somebody stole your, your American Express. Somebody stole it, and they took 17 people to Puerto Rico's. He said, but don't you worry about it, boy. <laughs> he said, don't you worry about it. The white man told me. Well, all we do to do is find out who it is. And they ain't got, we ain't got to pay for none of that. Because you know damn well, even your afflicted ass won't take 17 people to Puerto Rico. So we ain't got to worry about that. And I was like, all right, Dad, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I, and then I had to tell him the truth, right? So I said. That's not where I he said, was at. He was hot. I said, Dad. See, we're going to get 55000 you know, for the playoffs, and I took these guys to Puerto Rico. He said, Jay, that's $51,000. He said, Jay, Paul, get it. Don't spend that kind of money. He said, man, you're going to go broke messing around like that. 
He said, sit, me, man, God, man, get the hell out of my face. So he didn't speak to me for about three weeks. Just, then, just as you know, America, this is before the 90 million. Yeah, like, yeah whoa, before whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so then, then the bill, the bill came, right? And um, and my dad came upstairs, and he and my it was my playoff check money. So mm -hmm. I was like, all right, but I could hear the way his cadence was walking upstairs. He usually, when he excited, he walked like that. This was like, pissed. I was like, uh-oh. He came up, man, and his damn oh, wife beater shirt was real tight. You know, but like the muscle was coming all out his back. He said, kick the door, and boom. He said, hey, Mr. Motherfucking World Traveler. He said, your playoff check is here. And it ain't 55,000, it's 5,500. He oh. said, now we broke. We got to move. I got to burn this bitch down now. <laughs> I, I, was I went back to Charles. I was like, Charles, why you told me 55,000? He said, man, only a fool would know that. That's terrible, man. Yeah, 5,500. That's all we get. Oh, You're man. like, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is so, this time in your life, what, you're single, right? Yep. You're, you're, you're having an amazing time. How many years you spent in Philadelphia? Two. Okay, so you, you, you're having an amazing time. This is all going on. Uh, no accountant, right? I no, wanna, no account. No account. You're just moving. So how does how does the Nets come into play? How does that happen for you? Uh, Willis Reed always wanted to draft me, and uh, they traded uh, Charles Barkley. And once they got rid of Charles Barkley, they said we got to break separate him. They said, we're going to put him on the NBA. We're like, we got to put that crazy son of a bitch on the West Coast, and we're going to keep Jay over here. See, Jay only plays well when he's around his friends and family. So we're going to okay. move him closer to New Jersey. And that's how the league does. The league finds where you're real comfortable. Okay. You know, like all that draft stuff they be talking about in the draft. Remember back in the day, they used to pop them balls. You could see it uh -huh. in the lottery. Now they'd be like, trust me. You know, right? <laughs> and then this card and stuff. Yeah, so they put you where you belong, and I belong right there in New Jersey. Okay, so then you come here, you're having an amazing time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, like, I mean, we were talking off the the, the mic. I really uh, enjoyed the events. And, but you used to do a, a lot of charity things you had yep. happening mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. at the time. Yep. Because I know at your house, there was, yes, you lived there, but it was something, that you also had a section where the charity was involved. Explain that to me more. Yeah, we built a, well, my dad and I in construction, so, and my brothers all in construction, and my uncle. So we built a 31,000 square foot house, and every weekend, anybody in the school system of New Jersey who had perfect attendance and good attitude could come to my house. So we had four buses every Saturday, as so mm -hmm. long as I lived there for 10 years, they would come out there and they get to chill with me and with the ATVs, the horses, the llamas, and I spent every Saturday with them. The horses which, you know, and the which llamas. you know, hey, when we first came, you know, you just ah, as a kid, as a kid, he eleven, he twelve, it'd be cool, man. We were scraping up kids off the bottom of that pool from Newark. <laughs> well, it was also different at the time, Jason, because uh, celebrities were very much more uh, not tight, but not not as open to right. their house. Right. So that was, uh, to be honest, Jay, that was the first time I really experienced that. I mean, I know Naughty by Nature used to do an interesting pool party mm -hmm. like once a year, and uh, I'm trying to remember. I can't even remember. I think Queen Latifah used to do something. Uh, Heavy D, rest in peace, used to do this barbecue. Mm -hmm. But that was the first time it, for me experiencing a celebrity opening up his home. And I peeped your whole body language, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I didn't know you yet. Mm-hmm. You were super comfortable. Whoever you know, kid came over and spoke to you. You, mm -hmm. you took time, and I had also realized when by watching, I was like, "This ain't the first time this guy's done this." Right. <laughs> People are coming over right. here and having a good time. So now you're with the Nets. Now you get hurt, mm -hmm. right? It, Stefan was involved in in, yeah. in in that a little bit, right? Did you hate him? <laughs> did I? <laughs> did I? Yes, I did. The Kembe Mutombo knocked him into my knee. And my knee was locked, and I never played basketball again. Now, this is has to be 01, right? Yeah. 01? Yeah, so, two, but, yeah, no, yeah, 99, 2000, like 2000. 2000. But your contract, because correct me if I'm wrong, they had to kind of pay you out on that, right? Every dime. And still got some prefer, you refer, you know, money on the side that they still haven't paid yet. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it comes in handy when you say. I, I just want to have this the, right. Defer my some of that so money. So you did, you did like a, you were like a year in. Right. It was a 90 million. Yeah. 
they a matter of fact, it was more than that. People call it ninety million, but I had an extra year on that contract. Uh, uh, if I can make it there, would have would have made it one hundred and twenty four million. So, the Nets did they? I mean. I've always been fascinated in this type of conversation. Did they cut you that check at once, or is it over time? Mm-hmm. Or no, no, no. My dad used to be like this. Oh, don't y'all get that crazy some bitch that money on one time? You know, give it to him like I go to the bathroom, smaller than pieces. Yeah. You know, so, well, <laughs> but, but, uh, let me just tell you, this. we went in to negotiate my third contract, and I said, Dad, you ain't got to go in. You ain't got to be doing everything, Dad. He's like, No, I'm coming here because I don't want these white people to give you what you're worth. And we went in and we wanted three years, 15 million. And they was offering three years, nine million. So they went in and, and then they came in and Michael Rowe had a big stack of papers. I was like, what is that? And I looked over and started reading it. It was all the bad shit I did. I said, oh. I said, Dad, you know, you ain't got to be in here, Dad. I can handle it, right? He's like, no, I want to hear this. They said, they were like, January 4th, Jason came in with liquor on his breath. Mm. January 6th, Jason ain't coming at all. January 8th, Jason came in with liquor on the breath and a hooker. January 11th, Jason ain't coming. So my daddy said, Living, living. He's like, Who they talking about? I I said, Dad, that's just the way they do to bring the money down. It's all lies. It's all lies. And then, time they got to February, right? I looked over my dad. He had his hands over his eyes. He was praying like Jesus, right? He was like, Dad, like this. He was like, He just looked at me. And I said, Dad, you all right? He said, They all can't be lies. He said, hey, man, he pulled me to the side. He said, hey, man, you need to take whatever them white people want to give you. <laughs> he said, shit, man, you is a problem. He said, take that nine, man. Take the little bit of money. He said, because we going to owe them money in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but how old are you here, though, Jason? Oh, you got to be 24, 25. My brother, like, this old. is like, you yeah. know, you young. Yeah. yeah, and thank God they did give me that because I took three years, nine million, and then I played really well, and I come back and hit them for the 100. Yeah, and, and, and hit them for So, yeah. so. You, I mean, so then when you when you get hurt, you really just, this money's there. You have yeah. it. You know, you you. Yeah, and, and you know what happened there? That's when it all really started. When I got hurt, and I couldn't be a part of a team. That's when I started realizing. You know, I, construction was. I'm a great and construction how old, guy. And how old were you? Thirty one, thirty two. When, when when you when you got hurt? Yeah, thirty one, thirty two. I mean, you still could have did something. Yeah, more. still could have did. That's right. And and you know, so even like I am a cons- great construction. You know, you see me on. On cribs, you know, I drive my own tractor trailers. And oh, absolutely, I remember stuff. that. I yeah, remember so. that. I remember. That. I think I called you. I think I told you. <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, "Wow, he's out here moving." I remember. So, you know, now I go to work. Where I said I don't do my construction company, which we had big contracts in Newark. But you know, it was really like you didn't have to be there. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It was like, man, you know, it's like you coming in for the editing. Correct. You really don't have to be here. You are here for support. So I coming in there, and I didn't feel the same passion. So I was like, all right. So I went on radio. I went on TV. NBC came in. Dick Eppersall, God bless his soul, was like, man, you are the best we ever have on TV. And I just went on TV. I never talked stats, never talked any. I just told stories like what you and I were just mm. doing. And it worked. And we had the number one show. And then, uh, man, it, and it still didn't feel right because I didn't have my same friends that I had before. I had, you know, I was out drinking a lot. So I, to all the people that loved me, I was like, hey, man, I got a new crew in. You know, if y'all gonna go home, go home. Like, no hell, Jay, we ain't going home. We ain't got no job. You bring your ass home. That's why we here. So the new group would throw the old group out, and then the new group would come in with some friends. Now I'm in here with 25, 30 friends. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. And then boom, what happens? I go to Harlem Globe Charter game with my daughter, with my uh, my children. Uh, both my sisters died of AIDS. First women in New York City catch AIDS. She was robbed and stabbed and got it through a transfusion. And then my other sister started doing drugs with her and caught AIDS. Okay. So I adopted their children. You remember back in the day, we were always around with these two little children, a little Absolutely. boy and a little girl. Yeah, so they grew up, and when we got to be about 20-something, they had kids. And I brought them, my great-grandchildren, to a Harlem Globe Trailer game in Lehigh. And after the game, and this is the, 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 this, this is the this night. This is the night. This okay. is the night. So then we come back, and then we stop to get something to eat, and the kids go home. We talk junk, have smack, you know, doing it. And then... Uh, the owner says, I'm going to call you a limousine. Never met the limousine driver before. His name is Mr. Christoffi. He came over. He sat down. He joked with us for and about 35 is, minutes. Is, and I think the paper referred to him as Gus. Yes, correct? yes, okay. Gus. Yes. Yes. So he sat there and, 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 and hanging out and with us and everything else. We all decided to get back in the car. I drove back to my place. And then this is the thing that will ever change my life. I've caused so much pain. 
is that when I went into the house, I went into my bedroom, we had all our guns locked up, and there were shotguns, there were pistols, mm -hmm. and instead of Flex, me showing my Picassos and my pianos and my artwork, I want to show pistols and, and shotguns, and, and this is what these young brothers want to see. And, and I'm handling them out, handling them out, and Mr. Christoffi, the limousine driver, came into the house you know, he he felt welcome. He was no problem. This is everybody in the same room. Everybody in the, in, same, in the room. same room. And we are. Here goes a gun for you. Here goes a gun for you. Look at this one, man. This one right here. This cost six thousand. This shotgun. And while you're giving it to people, was flicking the clothes. And Mr. Christoffi walked into the line of fire, and the gun went off. Oh, Bam! Goodness. Killed them instantly. And they told me what I did was I just ran and jumped in the pool, and the guys were trying to move the body, and and and. And let me tell you something, man. Ain't nothing ever the same when you take somebody's life. Accidentally, it's something, and you can never get it back. Because I've taken everything a man has and wh what he's going to have. And the things that they said I did after, trying to move stuff, and then instead of being around the right people, and somebody said, if I was with you, Flex, you Jay, it was an accident. Stop. Why are you, you running know, around? Why are you jumping pool? You know, I was with people I didn't know, and they was moving stuff and doing stuff. And right there, man, that's, I went to jail not for the accident. I went to jail for moving stuff, for being a coward. You know, and I take full responsibility, trust me, man. There's not a day that wake, I wake up that, I, you know, I, I can see a gun on TV. And, and, what the, and, and, and it throws me like, why did I have a gun? Like, let's talk about why. You know, I go into the clubs. You see me all the time. People love me. It was never no problems with me. I was never, never going to get never. robbed. I, and I, you know? you're one of the few celebrities I would see by yourself. Yeah. I, yeah, no, you come like you come in and out of the club. You dolo, you hang out. And, yeah, you hang by the booth. I see you all the time, my and brother. And then when you start feeling more and more insecure, you get more and more people that come into your gang, let's call it a gang, and they start drama with the other people in the gang so they can put out fire so they can move up. And let me tell you Absolutely. something. When I had to think about why I had a gun, it was for the close brothers in the group that knew your inner secrets. It's like the dudes who know, hey, man, are you going to tell about me and that billy goat? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this for you. It ain't about, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't about me walking out. So you had to get crazy because you didn't know the guy you was hanging out with. And that's right. the only reason you have a gun. Who going to rob, who gonna rob Flex? Who going to rob Jason? Who coming out? No, we going no. for a good time. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I, I, I tell anybody, man, you don't need a gun. And if you got to go somewhere that, that you carry a gun, carry a police officer. Or better yet, just don't go. Wait, but you know, Jason... At that age, look, you're 31, you're sitting on a lot of bread and a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. You know, just like a lot of other ball players and a lot of the other sports figures, you know, the uh, the hanger-ons, I mean, they come. You know, I've experienced it. I know a lot of other people have experienced it and experienced it, those, those type of people and the wrong people. Have you have you been able to, have, have you and um, I know that, uh, the limo driver, he has a sister, correct? Yes. Have you and her been able to vibe and, 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 and talk at all? or o Only through the media and only through letters. Um, I, as soon as it happened, I, I gave a check for three and a half million dollars because I knew I was wrong. Okay. I didn't think it was a criminal case. I thought it was a civil case and she accepted my apologies and then, you know, it's still sore, man. It's still sore on everybody so we don't talk every once in a while here say something half positive and we go on. We just mm -hmm. go on with it, man. And it's a, uh, you know, and and, and well, go, when go you ahead. talk at this time, Jason. Now, is there? Because I've heard you talk about having alcohol right. addiction at the time. Mm -hmm. Now, is this is this all happening? Like while this is transpiring, is that is that was that the thing that was making life difficult for you? Oh. Is the alcohol? Man, let me tell you something, Flick. After I finished playing basketball, and I broke my leg, I had no structure. Mm -hmm. You know, all that stuff for, see, me and my dad, well, even when I had to play Michael Jordan, he would say, all right, boy, be outside 445. 444, be outside, don't let me blow the horn. And I, on this game day, and I go feed up all 800 of our animals, you know, we had all them rescue animals, go feed them up, and I go take a shower, and then he'd be like, all right, boy, drop that D8, that's a bulldozer, drop that off in Newark on Irvington Avenue, and and uh, and then, uh, then go see Michael. He talking about Michael Jordan, go play. And then when you come back, Bring that damn dozer back with you. Here I am, an NBA All-Star, bringing dozers, doing all that. But he knew he knew me. He knew that if I didn't have structure, I was a dangerous man. 
So like I would be playing and I had finger uh, grease under my nails and concrete on my arms. People used to look at me and go, what the hell? And then the season ticket holders would be like, oh, that's just Jay. That's the way his dad works him. Mm-hmm. You know, he crazy. He flicked it. And as soon as that stopped because my leg was broken, I was laying in the hot, in, on the bed and started taking them pills, I was like, ooh, these pills, man, this is pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then I went back and I did NBC, and it was great on NBC, but it still wasn't part of a team. I so, didn't get along so, with so, the, so, so, and I never knew this. So, so while the alcohol is happening, the pills are happening yeah. also. Mm-hmm. So this is, which is a deadly combination. Deadly combination. And, and this is for how long? This is for, man, I just, this might be... 15 years. Like you have Richard Pryor said, man, I've been sniffing cocaine 15 years for 15 ago. years and I ain't hooked. You know? Yeah, 15 years ago. You just, you're functional. You're such a big man. You work out every morning. You can sweat that off. You was playing basketball. You can do that. Uh, and then, you know, what happened is you feel more and more insecure. So you look for more and more people to show off in front of. Gotcha. So, you know, now I go buy a Lamborghini and then the next thing I buy the Ferrari 550 and then I have 20 cars and showing off, putting it in front of my house. Casey, you was killing him out here. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't, I mean, bro, I, he's describing it and I want to say, oh, that's, we shouldn't have done that, but no. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, yes, Lord. I'm trying to find the part, and I'm like, nah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, listen, I want to take none away. This guy was doing it so big, New York. <laughs> On the nuts. They wasn't even, they wasn't even killing him out there. He was killing him on the nuts. The Knicks players was looking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, they wasn't even winning a ton of games then, bro. Like, he pulled on the big money. I mean, you divorced now, so we ain't going to give up too much. <laughs> I'm divorced, too. I made mistakes. <laughs> but, I mean, look, back to back to the yeah. Nets and back to everything that's going on. So, how did you – How did what made you – what happened to make you break the addiction? Right. And then, you know, how did you – you know, dude, because there's not a lot of stories of the people who come back from it. I'll be honest, seeing you say, I, I, like, you're telling me, I kind of forgot. Like, I'm seeing you just like, I feel like I'm seeing you like how I used to see you before, yeah. you know, at, 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 and, and, and doing your thing. And you, you always struck me, Jason, as, because I paid attention to all the incidents. Mm-hmm. Something the club or pushing or shoving, mm-hmm. but you always struck me as you never you never struck me as a person that's gonna take too much guff. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I never got that from you. I never got I got from I got what he got from Jason is you know he's not gonna ball you but he's gonna stand his ground. And he's gonna be for what's right and what's wrong. Mm-hmm. That, that that's me. This in, in, in seeing you out. So some of those um, in hindsight you know, while you were playing and you look at some of those situations and now you fast forward to 2017 to some of the ball players, you know, and, and the things that they have going on, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's happening in a bigger way, like with, with, with some of these young athletes and the, way, and the way it's moving out there, you know, like it's not as a, it's a lot of money right. at a young age yeah. and then, and then to go to a city you're not from. Right. And then not be there with your friends. Mm-hmm. Like how like that that has to be a struggle as an athlete. Well, I can tell you what happened to me. Flex. The first thing, man, I just started drinking heavy and I started getting agitated because I started putting on so much weight and This is while you were playing or while you yeah, were off. Listen, right when I was off. I forgot, you know, yeah, you did. Yeah, I lost okay. seventy five pounds now. But uh, you know, I I would just drink and then I, I wouldn't come out my, my penthouse because I was heavy, my clothes didn't fit well, you guys would be throwing a party somewhere, and I put on my jeans and can't get in them, I said, hell with it, drink, take a sleeping pill, eat a pizza, go back to bed, that was my thing. And I kept getting more wretched as a person. And then I got the craziest thing. One day, took a sleeping pill and drank some beer and watched this dude named Bear Grylls. You know, the dude from, he go out there and be on, we live in the wilderness. <laughs> So I'm watching this, right, and, and this pill and this alcohol hit me the wrong way, and I called my financial advisor. I said, hey, find me a cabin in the woods. He's like, what? He's like, Jay, won't you wait till tomorrow? I said, find me a cabin in the woods. And he found me. A lot me. of people don't share these stories. Yeah, man, like, I know. He I know. Them. Like, a lot of dudes want to front. Yeah. Keep yeah. it in a book. Yeah. He was like, uh, Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony have a one for sale up in uh, Rome, New York. 
And I was like, uh, buy it. He was like, okay, well, we'll look into it. I said, buy it. I said, I won't be in next week. And I stood there in my house, and I drank and drank and got ready and watched all these this movies on how to survive in the woods. And I went up there, man, and three, uh, three hours from here, and I went up there, 300 acres on the hill or real logs, big as a car. I, went, I was like, wow, man, this is all right. F the world. I don't, I don't like nobody. I'm going to do it. I went up there, bare, and I only had one person I could see. And he would come up with this old pickup, and he'd give me dandelion wine moonshine. I was like, Yo, perfect. Bro, you no, it I never had it. You drank it? And give me bear meat. I ain't never had bear meat either. But obviously, I would drink this thing, and I would drink damn near a gallon a day. And I was up here, like, after the first day, I was like, this is cool. Nobody bothered me. Third day, I was like, this is all right. I ain't got no so TV. Now, so now you're no longer in Jersey. I ain't no longer in Jersey. I'm in the middle of a mountain on top of a mountain with nobody. I can't see one Is light. anyone visiting you? Nobody. Nobody. Day six come, I was like, oh. Shit. Day and six? They, they like red, you know, cabin. And shit, day nine come, cabin fever pop. They like, red rum, red rum. boy. And looking for my damn caretaker who lives off the property. He was so scared of me now, I had a full beard. He just come down like like Funny Farm, that mailman. He just dropped the damn uh, moonshine in the snow and keep going. You came to my house. They keep Jeep, going. My Jeep was turned upside down, my ATV, my snowmobile, my horse was on the back for, I turned over everything. Now, now where, where's your wife during this whole ordeal? You're still married. I'm still married. Where is she? It's in the penthouse. She, okay, <laughs> so she, we can't. Yeah, she, 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 I, I left. She doing her thing. She like, your crazy ass want to go up and live in the mountains with goats. And let me tell you something. It got real, man. I had this big black bear, like 400 pounds, and it would come over. And I said, hey, man, you know, and I would throw some food out the door. He'd be looking at me and look like, hey, man, it's just me and you, man. You know, we can do this. We can handle it. I said, I said all right. I feed him a little. And then one day we was running low on Keep food. Coming back. Yeah, like a cat. Huh? Or a Negro. You know, so what happened is, so I would, I, I, I would throw a little something out. Right, and then I was like, hey, man, I'm trying to talk to him. This is how crazy I am, bro. I'm crazy. And I'm opening <laughs> the door. The, right? up, and I was like, the, look. By yourself. By myself. I got two sandwiches left. I gave him one. Now it's a storm out. Ain't got well, no you power. You're like, I'm going to need that other one. Yeah, it is. So I gave him one. He looked at me like, hey, man, you know where my ratio is. So I was like, hell no. So I took it back. This damn thing went crazy. Took my grill uh, t- picked it up, turned my grill upside down, crashed in my truck, defecated on my, on my step. Now, I'm a convicted fellow, so I can't have no pistol. So, and oh, wait, no, wait, that, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait. This is after? Yeah. I'm thinking this is before. Hell no, I, I lost my mind back again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wait, 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 I'm thinking this is before the incident, so this is no, after. This is after the accident. This is when I'm supposed to have gotten my shit together. Just okay, wait a minute. We're going to back up, right. Jason. Hold up. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. It happens. The court case goes, and we're in like 09. No, we're in like 010, right? Yeah. We're in like 010. I go to prison. You do like two years. And you, do you, and you want me to tell your prison story? Okay. Which prison did you go to? I went to a whole lot of them. I went to Trenton. I went to uh, Rodway. Trenton can't, Trenton can't be good, yeah, bro. Yeah, Trenton. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to tell you Because Trenton is... is <laughs> and, 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 so the Trenton prison, bro. Yeah, let me tell you something. And then I went to Mid-State. That Mid-State. scared me. Uh, I, I went to Rikers. Okay. Uh, so let me tell you this, what the craziest thing is. So I said, I'm going to keep my black record. I, in my mind, I was like five years Shit, that matters. I'm claustrophobic. That matters. That's a life sentence for me. Mm. So I went in there like, I ain't coming. Yeah, but, but how tall are you, bro? I was tall, but I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, this, I, you know, I don't. You know, you're yeah, not I going in there but, four feet. But shit, man, a giraffe can get one lion, but he can't get the rest of them wolves. You know, it's fifteen thousand more. Than, you know, so I was just like, all right, I'm going up in here. I got my best black going on. I was like, Shh, I'm going. I ain't going. I'm gonna get fifty years anyway. You know, so I walked in there, and I'm looking at the people that had bad feet. So if I see him, they walk with the pigeon feet, they walk out, I was like, I'm going to jump on that dude, as long as he's big enough, you know. But this is what happened. They pulled me up out of— Which jail are you in now? I'm in Trenton, but you have to go through to see where they're going to clash you. You know, okay. uh, and this is crazy because it, it, this is when, like, when you first get in. You first get in. First get in. Get in. in. You're sentenced you're, you're, you're to the sentence, five. Yep, sentenced to the five, and you go in here, and they tell you 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 got to stay in here about a week. But now the now the they was watching me, so they said, "Hey, man, you ain't got to stay in here. We can do we can assess you. The assessment center's called. We can assess you ourselves and get you out of here." And uh, I looked over at Tony. He was the he was the man. I said, "Nah, my man, 
I said, I'm gonna do it like everybody else do it. I thought it was gonna be a day. Shit, and I'm claustrophobic. They put me in there with six dudes in one cell. Lord. Man, and one dude, let me just tell you this. And then as soon as I got there, here come the turtles. That's the SWAT team. It all looked like turtles. They came, everybody get down. I'm like, this is what's going on. Get out, get out. You're like, right? what the fuck? I'm so what the first day in there. So they go and throw me in, in, uh, in this room with five other guys, but two guys were dressed. Now, I'm butt ass naked. And let me tell you something. It's February, and the floor is cold. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and I'm a, a movie, yeah yeah bro. yeah and, and 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 I'm a shower, not a grower. You know what I'm saying? So however, so, so oh no, all the way around. But I know I want looking good, right? <laughs> so one guy is got a clothes on this side, and one guy has got clothes on this side. And all the other five guys ain't got no clothes on. So well, one one of the guys in the back go, Yo Jay, I go what well, what? Don't call my name in here. You know, because people keep looking through the, the window and they're slamming back, all the COs. And he go, man, it's Rashad, man, it's Rashad from Harlem. I go, what up, man, what's good? He go, I need you to do me a favor. I said, you see me on my knees? I said, do you no damn now, favor? Now, where's he talking to you from? From the back. Our back, we all on our knees, you know? Oh, so it's yeah. somebody you really know. Yeah, from the streets. Okay, you know? okay, okay. And so and then they got the Spanish guy in front of me. Yeah, habla, yo, habla uh, uh, espanol. No, man, I don't speak nothing. I don't speak <laughs> shit. I don't know nothing. I won't hear nothing. He told me, he said, um, and then the said, hey, Jay, you got to pass something back. I said, pass something back? I said, ain't this, I've been in jail five minutes, and here I am in a drug transaction. I look back, and I said, Rashad, I ain't passing nothing back. He's like, Jay, man, if you don't, we all going to get busted. I said, God. Ah! So I said, come on, Pedro. So I said, I don't know the dude's name, just Spanish. So come here, give me, give me it. And now he the one with the clothes on. She said, okay, okay, okay. Man, this dude reached up his rectum, man, all the way up his rectum. Oh. And I was like, oh, hell. I said, man, uh uh. I said, I tell you what, Rashad, I'm going to lean back. And he can throw it. <laughs> Ain't no way in the hell I'm going to touch it. He's like, you got to pass. I said, I'm going to lean back. <laughs> Fat Joe, this shit, right? I, oh, I can't, I can't, I, I, I can't. I, I lean back. And he threw it. And when he threw it, right, it went cling, cling, cling. I was like, oh, okay, all right. I said, like, that's over with, right? And then Nuts. the Rashad took it. Now check this out. We called it Boofin. Took it and put it up his record. Ah! And I was like, oh, shit. That's gross. You know? So I had to look back to see what it was, right? I looked back and said, damn, what kind of drugs sound like clink a link a link I looked back, it was a cell phone. <laughs> One of my own cell phones. Uh, oh, kill, kill. You know them kill shit. Big ass square tongue. I said, oh shit. And this and now, is check this out. Oh nine. Oh nine. I'm saying now. I'm thinking to myself, these motherfuckers gonna kill me. Like I ain't all my blackness is gone, boy. I didn't sign I'm up a, for this. I, I, like, I didn't sign up for this. There, right? So he, hey, hombre, the guy in front of me, what? Yo, you had something else to pass back. I said, not unless you're gonna take it out of your ass and wash it. I ain't passing back. I'll lean back. And he's like, Marshall, come on, Jay, lean back. And they lean back and they throw, this time this is heavier, boom. I said, God, boy, what kind of drugs sound like that? I looked back to see what it was right before Rashad went to put it up his ass. Uh, it pause. was a charger, uh. the block charger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to the house, I told him, I need it's my not. one call. I called my dad. Hey, set, hey, set. I, I said, Joe Hayden. These motherfuckers crazy. I can't do it. They now, gonna eat me alive. Now wait. Now, now here's what's happening. Let's describe it right. Cause now you're in. There's no alcohol. There's nothing. There's nothing no. you're used to outside. No. <laughs> so, no. so you, you. I'm with Jordan. <laughs> Six dudes. I'm claustrophobic. I'm just like I'm like a caged animal, man. I might shoot somebody. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Get crazy. Crazy, man. Outright crazy. How nuts! What, what, like, so, how long were you there in Trenton? I was in Trenton for two weeks. Okay, and then, and and then, then now I went where to you go? Mid state, uh, and I went to Mid state, and then when you get in trouble, you had to go to Trenton. Uh, but Mid state, and then after that, I went to Rikers, and I now, did so, Rikers. So now, now, so now we're at we're at what twenty ten, right? We're at what twenty twenty. You're in, mm -hmm. and you got you got convicted. Your conviction was My foot uh, cover up. For the cover up. So now you're in, you're serving your time. Yep. It, it looked like it's going to be five years, but it really turns out to be 18, eight, 27 months. 27 months. So you're, you're out a little earlier, and um, now you're out. So now when you come out, 
correct me, you you haven't you you're clean. Yeah. When you come out, mm -hmm. so at some point now, your your dad hasn't passed away yet. Yeah, he passed away. He passed away while you were in. He passed away right before I went in, and that's when I went in. Okay, which had to be very yeah. difficult. So now you come out. What sends you to a place where you're not able to f function? And now is it is it now again the alcohol and the pills when you yeah. come out? Yeah. Because now now what 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 pushes you in that direction? Uh, people turning their back on me. You know what I'm saying? Now people mm. want to hear jail stories, but won't give you a job. And I didn't want no money from people. I just wanted some old positions back. Mm. Hey, I go to the nets and say, hey man, just put me on the bench. You ain't got to pay me. I got money. You know, nah, Jay, you got to have to work back for that. Nah, nah, everybody was saying nah. So I was like, nah, all right, cool. You know, I, I'm just going to run the street, run record, run record. You know, Jason, with, because people knew I knew you well mm -hmm. and, and how well I knew you. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I, I, I will take nothing away from what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you described it about yourself. That it was wrong and it was a coward thing to do and it was an accident. But I remember as that was going on, mm -hmm. and people got mad at me mm -hmm. because I watched Jersey especially, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know, I was able to speak what you did for the community mm -hmm. and how you moved. Thank you. And the, I don't, I, it's not even like a turning of the back. It was like, a, I'll be honest, it was like a fuck you. Mm -hmm. we'll keep it a buck, and 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 I I was I was surprised on that part of it. W were you surprised on that part of it? Yeah, you know I don't think nobody has given more money as a team uh, as a team player than me. You know, St. Wow. John's needed two point one million, uh, a pediatric aid needed a million, Newark needed a million. I was just going around because I know that you never see a hearse carrying a U-Haul or pulling a U-Haul. Mm -hmm. So I always, you know, you guys, anybody needed money, I always help. This is pre-accident. And, and I had an accident. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I did a coward thing, and I was sorry, and I'm still sorry to the day. And, and I thought that people would come on and say, hey, Jay, take, you know, come on back. Guys was like, nah, man, you know. Uh, and then now, now let's fast forward a little there bit. There were people who were being judgmental about the amount of time. Right. God, they, they, yeah. they, they, were, they were complaining. But you know what was crazy is that I didn't go to jail for the, everybody understood it was an accident. Correct. I went for the obstruction of justice trying to move the gun and cover it up. You know, all 12 jurors sat there and said, oh yeah, we know it's an accident, mm -hmm. but you know what I'm saying? Why did he try to cover it up? So he's got to go to jail for that. You know, and uh, let me tell you something, man. It don't take 25 years to go in there straight and, you know, <laughs> you, know you go in there with them wolves, you know, you go to Rikers, all you need is... 20 minutes mm -hmm. to understand that you did something now, when wrong. You're, when you're doing these two years, mm -hmm. this has to be now, what 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 what, what year do you come out? Uh, I think I came out in uh, like 10. So were you under the understanding when you came out that that you were going to be able, not because somebody told you anything, but you were going to be able to resume some of your previous life? Yeah, because you become institutionalized. You know, you start counting days and you start thinking you're bigger than you are and you think you're smart smarter because you went to, like people think you go to jail, it's like Harvard. When you come out, you got knowledge and everybody wants to hear it and hears the stories. When I came out, people was like, uh-uh, man. You know, I tell you who did, though. CBS came out and gave me a podcast. I went on there and I talked about Aaron Hernandez as the number one podcast. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to do. It wasn't where my passion was. I was still, because uh, I was on parole, I wasn't drinking. Um, but as soon as I got bored, man, when I get bored, like if I ain't in here with you right now, I'm with Sean Nassif, I'm with, you know, I'm with JB, you know, I'm hanging out in Park at Park Styles up in, you know, his barber shop up in Union City. We just we we boxing, we we playing chess, we doing something because if my mind gets mm -hmm. idle, I'm messed up. So now this now let me tell you where we at now, so you understand. I couldn't I go teach basketball. I, I had a job to go uh coach in the NBA. And this is what team was this? This was the Philadelphia 76ers. So now this is after you come out. This is after I come out. This is this is recently. This is maybe a year ago now. Got you. Now, now I went to to treatment 22 months ago. Uh huh. I went in there and I was like, yo, this is all right, but it's wrong. It's all set up wrong. I'm in a cheap hotel, and 
we just go in one room and you get one guy ask you, how you feel today? There's no outside. You go to Florida. You want vitamin D. You should be on the beach. You should do this. I said, what? Came back in, scraped up everything we had, and went down, put $16 million into a treatment center. And I did it this way. I bought three bungalow hotels on the beach. So you turned down the job. Turned down the job. I turned down the job. I can't teach a kid how to do no jump hooks when these young people are teaching me how to stay sober. Correct. You know, that, that's so... And how long have you been sober? 22 months. Which is uh, two years. Yeah, okay. coming on two years. So you when know? you wrote the book, right? You, were you, you weren't sober yet. When I wrote when I wrote the second book, I was in jail. I was sober. You were sober. I was sober. Okay. Yep. yep. So now this is what we did. We said, look, you come down to Florida. We don't want you just going into a hotel and staying under. You want vitamin D. God cures you. So we came up with some called outdoor adventure therapy. So six o'clock in the morning, you wake up. Six to seven is breakfast. Seven to eight is we on the beach. You jog. What meditate. time you getting up? It's six o'clock. A.M., which is yeah. really five. Yeah, we are we in the gym at 4.44 a.m. Me and Sean and the same It's right dark out. Day. Dark, and it's dark when we get out. You know what I'm saying? So you start, you start, now, so when you say in Florida, so now, tell me the name of the facility. It's called Rebound Institute. So Rebound Institute. So yeah, now, Re Rebound you moved down there, you live there. I live there. Are your children there also? No, my children are in New Jersey. Your children are in New yep, Jersey. I still got to keep working on me. I need a little more time. You need some time. Okay, right. so then now, so you, so I, is this also helping to keep you in yes. a great place? Lex, let me tell you something. Six to seven in the morning, me and Sean Nassif, we get up, we have breakfast with our, we don't call them clients, we call them teammates, and we're the first treatment center to be endorsed by National Basketball Retired Players Association, so we get pros down here, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so six to seven is breakfast, they have their own chef. So is it just ball players? No, anybody, it's, it's ball, anybody, it, it's ball, it anybody, has ball, but, some but ball players. But not the guys who've been in eight and ten times, because I can't help them, it's for the new ones, I want you to leave here and say, this is the not the first time I went to treatment. I wanted to say it's the only time. So it's for the newbies, one, two, maybe three. We screen everybody. We're a small center. We're not trying to make money. The, the guy right next to us uh, down the next town, he has 800 beds. You know, we only have 20 people, and that's what works because we're trying to make money. But we have the nicest facility in the country. Three hotels on the ocean, 20,000 square foot building. Nobody ever sees you. That's your clinic. So six to seven is breakfast. Seven to eight is on the beach, stretching, running, meditating. And then 8.30 until 12, everybody. Scuba diving, uh, uh, snorkeling, uh, skydiving, fishing, Stand up paddle boarding. We teach you golf. We teach you tennis. Every day is a different outdoor adventure therapy. And this is not just for you to have fun and overcome barriers and anxiety. But this is so when you leave here, you don't come back and say, yo, Flex, let's go to the bar. Let's go to the club. I, you got a whole new set of friends to do it. Now, and how, let me, let me just how do they get to your facility? That, that's, and this is what, this, I, is like, great. this is why I do your show, Flex, for the for the information, man, it doesn't cost anything. You know the Europeans. You know what Europeans look like. You know uh, our counterparts are the you know the uh, the white folk. Do you know what they do okay. when they have a problem? They walk into the HR, Human Resource Department, or EAP, Employee Assistance Program. They walk in. They're hey, how you doing? Um, I have a problem. I have anxiety. Um, I'm having a little problem with my medication. Boom, stamp. Okay, go away. And they send them away from 30 to 45 days. And they pay for it. Your insurance pays for it. Black folk got insurance. We just don't know Absolutely. about treatment center. Absolutely. You go in there and it's the HIPAA law. That lady cannot tell your boss or tell anybody. I go to jail if you come down here and I say you was here. I can't even say you was here. You stalk right out and you come down to us at Rebound Institute and you get better for 30 or 45 days. I'm no guru on how to get better because I'm learning, but I turn you over to Harvard licensed therapists who look like us, who knock it out the box. 31 people and no cookie cutter. Everybody here, no template. You deal with these guys one-on-one. -on -one. Man, it's, and then you go to PGA uh, Golf Country Club in the evening to get your steam on and exercise. Most people lose 30 pounds and they learn what their trigger points are. And let me tell I picked you up from the airport. Let me tell you something, Flex. I, I had two tickets, third row, because my best friend is the president of a big network and I got on the plane and I said, man, I can't go see Mayweather. And I got my ass off that plane and I went back to my safe place 
and we don't, which is my treatment center, mm-hmm. Rebound Institute. You know, you call me. My, the number it sounds like it's too many numbers, but it's one eight seven seven two rebound. The number two one eight seven seven two rebound. You call, you probably get me. It's like that. It's a family, man. And we has a success rate. One out of every six people hooked on drugs. I wish these athletes come out here. Now they starting to, yo, Jay, I want to do this. Stop with the stigma, man. Stop going into somewhere. Stop going to jail. Stop going to treatment and then coming out and act like you weren't in there. Come out there and spread your knowledge, man. Look, you can do this because there is no cure for addiction. But there is treatment. And what we do, and I, and I end on this, I know I get excited, is that the accountability partner, we have a Fitbit that we invented and we give it to you. And if you do drugs or alcohol, it will go off in our computer in 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then we don't call to go, you busted. We call, hey, man, we got to restart you. And then also we keep that on you so we can reward you. We see how you're working out because we have three and four alumni trips every year. And we go to the Bahamas because now you know how to scuba dive. Everybody who works with me scuba dive is certified. Now you know how to skydive. Now you know how to play golf. Now you with a whole different friend. You ain't coming back to the hood sitting on the bench playing scalesies, man. But, but you know, Jason, uh, you, I, there's a step that maybe you can help people yeah. with that's before coming. You know, uh, I, for people who are having an issue, who are stuck, uh, that are hooked on, I mean, look, we know what it is out here. The uh, you know the prescription drugs is heavy. The lean, you know the um, what's the 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 the, 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 the dope is, is is heavy out here. You know it's a it's aggressive out here, my brother. And I, I know you know, but I'm but, saying. But, but let me just tell you a quick example, and, and people get angry with me. I had a very wealthy man who's in charge of uh, one of the biggest beer companies. He had a son, and five of his sons, white boys, very wealthy, and they all sniff heroin because now they got fentanyl, and it, that fentanyl will kill you. But now they, it used to be you cut the heroin with the fentanyl, now they're cutting the fentanyl with the heroin. Cause that, so he, they, they were, it's six of them, and his son was the one who would hold the, knock, the pen, and they let them all die, they OD. Because wow. they're on heroin, they take a hot shot, and then he'll go around, hit this one with the pen, hit this one with the needle, hit this one, wake them back up, and yeah, yeah, but they were dead, they were flatlined. So he goes, hey man, Rebound Institute heard so much about it, you know, hey, uh, I know a friend of yours, so I'm gonna send my friend, uh, my son and his friends down to you. I said, oh, oh, brother, I said, they all just tried to kill themselves. I mm. said, you can send your son, but the other five guys got to go to different places. I said, this ain't no club. This serious business, man. People die here. I said, they just killed themselves. How can they come down here and act like they're you know, going away to camp? And he was like, hey, man, you, who do you think you talk to? You know who I am. Blah, blah, blah. You know how many of my beers you drink? I said, yeah, I do. You know? And he go, boom, boom, boom. You know, he hung up the phone. Three weeks later, he called Sean and I said, I wish I would have listened. My son OD'd. Wow. You know, and I'm serious, man. These white kids and now now us because hey, listen to me, man. One out of six people are doing it, but heroin is one third the price that it was in the seventies. And you can't get these oxycontins no more and these boys are shooting it up and, and let me tell you it's an yeah. epidemic now. That means white folk are doing it. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about man, I pick up everyone and it only a twenty minute ride to our facility from the airport. And me and Sean be like, wow, we got to lay stuff back. They're cold, they're hot, they're throwing up, they're bleeding, they're picking their face, they're eating their face off, good-looking white kids. You know, the brothers come down there, man, you, you know, hooked on all kind of stuff. And I'm like, bro, stick with me. Let me tell you something, Flex. You send me somebody and you give them to me and my staff for 45 days, you are not only helping that person because I've made a deal to you, I'm going to get them right, but you helping me because that keeps me there for 45 days and that keeps my ass from shaking it up in Macy's window. Mm -hmm. So every day how God works, man, this 12-step program, boom, man. Every time I start going, I got this. I got my own self. I'm good to go. And then God goes, hey, man, here goes your boy's son. He needs help. So it just keeps going. And we only keep it at 20. I have placed over 400 people this year, 400. Mm-hmm. Now, you go to this one, go to this one. I keep 20 with me because I know 20 get it right. My therapist of it, and they get one-on-one attention, send them to me. Send them to me, man. one eight seven seven two rebound You probably get me, but if not, I'm not far away, and we'll get them down here. We get them help. It's not about the money. It don't cost none. Go to insurance. Quit letting just white folk know that you can go get treatment. Walk your ass into the EAP office and human resource and say, I'm sick. 
I'm sick and I need help. Mm -hmm. And that's how it is. We don't know that. We pay for insurance. Our grandmamas used to pay for insurance under white man come on the so debt. So is it in being clear in insurance? Is this this is of course your regular insurance? I mean, what happens if you're on Medicaid or does that all work? Like all of those, the, all of those it's different private insurances. Private insurance. It's private, private insurance. insurance. But if you got Medicaid or Medicare, this place is down there. For my place, you need private insurance. Private insurance. Private insurance. And it, and 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 they can come and get they you. They can come to, come on down there and get better, man. It ain't no cure. But you know we gon' don't come if you don't want to be my friend for the rest of your life. Cause Sean and I, man, every morning we do something like this, a little show, and it goes on. It's like a Marco Polo app, and we see where's that. And if you ain't pop in at 5:30 in the morning, and you ain't in the gym, you ain't doing your thing. We gonna have somebody who's close to you knock on now, your door. Now, does everyone that's helping you at your facility? Uh, the, have they also been through drug addiction and they are recovering? So is it like so that? Is there like that marriage or that understanding of people who are coming in? You know? All right, that's a good question. So we did it because the recidivism rate is 99%. Mm -hmm. So I came in and I changed everything. Everybody who works for me is college educated. There is no tattoos. We're no smoking facility. You, if you come in and you smoke, you're going to have to get a patch and give it all up one time. Our BHT, behavioral, tech, tech, behavioral health technicians, who spend 85% watching the client, those are usually the guys who have all been through treatment. You know, they're all college educated. We took nine months before we hired them and worked them for free. I wanted to meet their wives. I wanted to meet their daughters. I wanted to make sure they were good people because they are so, so important to making sure that the stay goes wrong. So we don't have anybody who works for us that's been through treatment except for me. Got you. Okay. That's it. We just changed it up. Okay. All our clinicians and stuff, Harvard certified. We have the best doctors, you know, and 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 it's people that look like us, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. It's key. It's key, man. It's, it's key. key. And it's like we gotta get it. Like we don't know that. You know what we do when we get drunk? We get drunk. We oh shit, man. I know I lost my job. You know I ain't going in no more. Don't know you can go in the e e EAP or a human resource. Hey man, I miss I have my an job. Issue. Yeah, I have an issue. Mm. And they're gonna say, I'll be honest, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't know until today. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I didn't know that's you. I did not know that you could walk into your you job, walk in there, and, and say you're you having an issue. And you come right down the Rebound Institute, man, and they never put a blemish on but your you, record. You know what it is, though. It's uh, man, Jason, we live in a time though where we're afraid to show weakness. Yeah, you know, we're, yeah. we're afraid. Like, 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 mm -hmm. like, as you saying it, right? Mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself, okay. If I got an issue, maybe, all right, what would I do? Okay, I go my job. But then you feel like everybody now knows it's your job. Right. You know, which which is, is in, 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 in today's age of social media uh, and pressure. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I think, I think it's hard for some. I'm going to tell you something. We got some high-profile people at my place right now, and it's up to them to say where they were. People, they would never find out where they are. But guess well, what? Well, I think prior. But, yeah. I think before they get to you, right. Jason, it's a, it, it, it's it, it's hard. Right. I, 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 you for, for sponsors, number one, uh, you work with Ciroc. Or, right? Correct, yeah. You work with Ciroc. So, you know, which I'm going to tell you something, you guys should do something on the preventive side, too. I because agree. you know You're what? Right. You know, I, I would love to sit did down pay, with you Did guys. he pay attention? Yep, yep. <laughs> did he pay attention? Because, look, man. I'd rather work with you guys on the preventive side, you know, because there are people who have one and two drinks. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's what Ciroc is about. Correct. Have one or two. I can't have one or two. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, one is not enough, and, 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 and 40 is, is, is what? Over the limit. Like, yeah, over the limit. Or some kind of saying go like that. So, But if you guys have a preventive stop and say, hey, man, drink responsibly, you know, and, and even I think come. You're right. Yeah. You know, that's what it's all about. It's about balance. I have experienced, I have a couple childhood friends who've struggled. Mm -hmm. I have, um, I've had friends of the family, a few family members struggle. And I've watched them go through certain processes. Mm -hmm. And probably the hardest process that I have difficulty understanding is if you're, if you smoke weed too much, I, 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 or let's say you're taking pills, mm -hmm. prescription drugs, part of the process is there's no alcohol. 
there's no weed. Mm -hmm. There's no, uh, you know, for the people that I know, it's not like, no, stay away from the thing that was giving you an issue. Right. It's like anything that alters you. Right. Right? So, I've never had enough nerve to say to the person that I may know that's struggling is like, wow, I, I don't know how, I don't know how that starts because that's like, you have people right now, you have youngins that smoke weed, mm-hmm. Jason, and, and maybe that's all they do twice a week. Mm-hmm. And they function and they go to school. So now you get a pill problem. Mm-hmm. You know, but to certain people, they want to go back to when they were just using the weed and buying a cheeseburger. Right. You, you right. see what I'm saying? Like you, 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 you want to you get rid of the pill addiction. Right. But to get rid of the pill addiction, mm-hmm. you got to now... If you took a beer or right. you took some alcohol or you took some weed, now that's all off the table. Right. I do believe, and I'm not even a person coming from it, that that is difficult. Yeah. I, I, I like the probably the most difficult part. And I, I mean, I never had addiction. I've just watched people who've gone through it. That seems to be like their like, well, you know, their thing. A lot of people come to us when they hit rock bottom. A lot of uh, athletes. A lot of average. What is rock bottom? Rock bottom is when you just giving up your liver is gone you ain't got no place to go everybody hates you and that's rock bottom and now <laughs> that's rock I'm not because he said the liver <laughs> rock, rock, rock bottom is when you go live in the damn cabin and your best friend is a bear that is rock bottom you know so you know when, 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 but also we have a judge a full time judge on staff and what I'm saying is because you get a DWI you get into altercation with your wife you know now these oh, are shit things, perks yeah, you know <laughs> These are things that come down. Because, but, but now when we set it up for you, we go, we're going to talk to your prosecutor and we're going to speak to your judge about helping so you. So the judge is yeah, the judges there all the all, time? All the time and helping you. But what he can now, do what now. Can, what does he do? Like there's a court? Yeah, we, there. No, no. He, he, he comes in. He, he walks finds you out. It. He says, yo, you got a DWI. Look, I'm going to speak to your prosecutor. If you get through this thing 45 days, we're going to call up there and say how much how much, how much better you're course? doing. You know? <laughs> no, this is all, this is all is exclusive. This? But, 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 but this is what you can't do. But bring it on you. Is this what you can't do, Flex? You can't come up and say, okay, um, when I take this UA, which is you and analysis, and, and it's just, I came down here for benzos, but I'm just going to leave here on reefer. You got to be clean all the way around. We ain't no half-stepping. You can't even come in here with no cigarette behind your ear. If it's that, we got another treatment center out on called Orchid Blue. That's for the roughnecks. Okay. You go over there with that. Here is for the one and two people who want to get back energy, get back, say, this is my only time in treatment. But you're going to come now, here and you're going to quit all your now, addictions. Now, when you quit all those addictions, yes. Jason, addictions you, you're quitting, mm-hmm. right? This is for the rest of your life? The rest of your life. That's why me and you got to be friends. We have to be friends. You're going to have to meet 20 hard, people. 20 that people. That hard. Yeah, yeah. That's hey. it's hard. But you know, one day at a because, time, one breath but, but, at a time. That's why you need scuba diving. That's why you need snorkeling. That's why you, you know need golf. Like, I'm going to tell you what's hard. It's like yeah. if, let's just say I had a pill addiction. Right. And you said, all right, Flex, this, this you got to beat, and you can't eat a cheeseburger again. <laughs> it's like a... What, what do you mean? What, I, I, I can't. And look, a cheeseburger's not good for you, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it, it's. I think that's the hard part. Like, that's the hardest because you're not just going back to before your addiction. You're going back prior, almost to when you were a child, right? And you weren't, you weren't touching nothing. Flex, let me ask you this: When you were a child, were you happy? I was happy. I was right. a happy That's child. That's where I'm trying to get you back to. I was happy Before with the cheeseburger, drugs, too, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, uh, you can have the cheeseburger. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you can have the some... cheeseburger. Put the Oxycontin down. Well, here, Put the reefer down. It, it, you know? I want to ask you about today's society, Jason. Okay. Today, m- me and you are close in age. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm older than you, but we're close. Today's society, It preaches that it's okay for weed. It does. It screams it. You get states that are that are, mm-hmm. that, that that are bringing it on. Tat don't want to talk about it. <laughs> there's, 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 that's being approved. Then there's medical and there's everything else. So, the, okay. The the, the the drug. I'm just saying the drugs are just it's. 2017. The drugs are so glorified. I I take part in it. Because I play the music that glorifies it. 
Okay. I am a contributor to the to the call, to the problem to the issue. And the artist right. and so it's like a I struggle with my daughter the weed talk. But daddy five every I was in class or or, or it, no. Right. You know, it's it's like a it's like a it's like a, a uphill force because you're the parent and you sit there and you're telling them something. They get that record and that music, they turn on that radio, whatever they go on that they go on that app and then they hear that talk. And that talk is more prevalent, am I using the right word, than, than right. ever. It's it's the strongest right. it's ever been. Well, well this is the thing, Flex. Cool. Let weed be legalized. But check this out. So is alcohol. Mm. And alcohol kill more people than anything. Look, look at that. Yeah, look you know what I'm saying? So look at either, that. Look at that. either which way, on weed or on alcohol, you're going to have to come see me. Mm. So just because it's legal don't mean that you can abuse good. it. You know, you got people abuse, that, abuse, right, abuse, absolutely that right. can abuse. do. Abuse. I, don't, I don't smoke reefer, but maybe I don't know what's the equivalent to having true one OG, drink a day. True OG, said True OG. You know OG. what I'm True, <laughs> I, uh, that's the word I abuse. That's the word I use. You know, but hey, we got a lot of people who come down on reefer because when they do, they make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, they make bad decisions, man. And that's a gateway. Trust me, people say it's not a gateway. You know, I ain't, we don't have anybody in our treatment center who just came in and said, yo, man, I just started off with heroin. Mm. You know, they all, yeah, yeah the beer, correct. some reefer. You build up you know? to it. Yeah. And this is, society is different than when we grew up, man. We were just talking about that. Me and you were going to fight after school. About three people know about it. Now me and you are going to fight after school. Oh, Half of New knows. York know the internet. We got people in our treatment center that are hooked on the internet. Yeah. We, you know, it's, we got a, a kid who's so wealthy. He just in here. He ain't on no drug. Uh. He's just hooked on the internet. His cell phone. You get them all. Is that why he's yeah, there? Yeah, just that cell phone, video so games. You try to computer. weed him off. Yeah, yeah, weed him off. <laughs> yeah, you try to weed. You try to like weed him off. You try to like, like, yeah. like. But you, you, when it's time, when he first came in here, man, he ain't a big kid. You go in there, and you and Sean, Sean six five, Sean the Chief, MMA guy, third best in the world. He, that's who we had to send in there. And this kid, hundred pounds, get that damn computer. You ever had to fight him? Yeah, you, you got to give him some hell of a some looks. You know, you gotta go in there, but there's, get there's no fighting at the facility. <laughs> <laughs> there's no fighting at the facility. But hey, Where's, that's <laughs> when outdoor adventure therapy comes in. That's why you don't see young kids playing in the park no more, cause they on Which the was computer. It? Remember when you throw a basket? And, yeah. I'm gonna tell you what you used to Michael learn at that Jordan, park. Michael Jordan used to throw camps, and you get thousands of kids. Now nobody comes to basketball. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something you used to learn at that court. You learn everything necessary because. If you wanted to be picked for the team, you'd have to handle yourself a certain way mm -hmm. to even be involved. I, I wasn't the best sports guy, but I figured out if I bring the ball, right. <laughs> if I bring the ball, I'm getting picked. The niggas is not playing here with my ball, and I'm not on a team. No matter how young I am, I don't care if these niggas is older than me. <laughs> I always tell my parents, the ball, we got to get the ball. Let me get that. I'll be out here. <laughs> you learn your best negotiation mm -hmm. on that park, for and and even with girls, mm -hmm. you know, girl, because when you're at the park, girls start to hang out right. at some point. Mm -hmm. Then you learn how to play a little ball, look cool at doing that. Mm -hmm. Meet up with the chick later. You used to have to have your game, your your conversation. Uh, in order, and you're right, the games and the internet is taken away from that. Taken away, is. And, and you don't know how it's to deal. They life. become socially inept. Like me and you walk down the street, and we be walking together. We see one of these brothers coming down the street, or walking side to side. Me and you say, oh, let's cross street. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. They don't have that no more, because nah. they just watch a computer. So that computer gives off no body language. Yeah. So they go in there talk to everybody the way they talking to that computer. Now your phone got took. Yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> he was scheming on your phone yeah. from the gate. <laughs> exactly right. That man. subway taught you a lot too. Yeah, man. So with my that daughter, subway, is, I, can't, oh my I can't take the phone, so I just steal the charger when they go to sleep. Nice. Clean. So clean. I mean, it, it, it automatically limits it. That's right. The time. You know, they have it for a little while, they go dead. I don't know what happened to your charger. Mm. Mm. Do you, it, uh, Jason, do you? Do you miss the NBA? Do you miss involving the NBA? Do you want to return to the NBA in some way or form? I, I can't. I'm in a bubble. I, I can't do The only thing I, I'm really good at right now, the only thing I'm good at is helping people 
stay alive down the Inst- Rebound Institute. I can't do nothing. I ain't got the same passion. Like right now, me and you can stay on here for four hours talking about no, Rebound Institute. No, absolutely, I can't, absolutely. You, t- you talk to me about basketball, life. anything, man. The hell. When I pick up a kid from the airport and he's dying and his mama's crying and his father won't let go of the wheelchair, and I say, don't worry about it. Come back in 45 days and see what I'm bringing you back. That is it. And then that kid call you every day. And I can't teach no kid how to do no jump hook. And I'm the, and, and Flex, they think I'm helping them. But them jokers keeping me alive they by coming down too. to see me, man. God is awesome. I mean, God you look, good. bro, you. Thank you, man. I, I forgot. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Plus, I, 8% I for, body fat. I, I forgot that you gained weight. I really did. I forgot. Like, I mean, I remember when you say it. Yeah. I remember when you weren't playing. Right. And it, you put on weight. But I. I forgot, and I would think that you're more than two years clean. Yeah, I mean, thank you. you know, your, your, your vibe, your, your energy, and I, I would love to know what you think about um, Colin Kaepernick. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know you're watching it from the outside, and as you being an athlete, mm-hmm. what do you see? I see a young black man standing up for what he thinks is right. It's no different than what Martin Luther King did. It ain't no different then Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson. What kills me is, hey man, if this was, well first of all, what kills me is then when other brothers take down other brothers. You know, man, if he was on my team, now I think America's the greatest place in the world to live. Now would I have kneeled with him for all 82 games? Probably not, but I would kneel with him for the first two or three games, Mm -hmm. you know? I would put my hand on him, I would support him, that's his opinion. I'm gonna support him, but never, Ever, if you want to see me get back to being crazy, then watch another brother take down another brother. I heard somebody say, "Yo, oh, man, the brother should cut his hair," and then another brother come down and I say, think "Who was that?" You know, that, uh, that was, I think a, Michael Vick. Michael Vick did brother say that. Said, this is my flag, and he's an OG, and and I'm like, man, come on. Who man. about the Baltimore Ravens? What? Oh, uh, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis, uh, you know. But, but these are the same people that met with Donald Trump, uh, right? And these are the guys that met with him. So I don't know what's going on with, with that situation. Come on, man. This is a young black man who's standing up for some injustice that are going on in America. And you see, after he did it, look where we at. We had a civil unrest. Mm. So all the stuff that he see, he, he see, sta- he is kneeling for is now come to light. But guess what? We didn't need him to do that. Me and you walk down the street all day long and see it. Mm-hmm. You get in this elevator. You a millionaire. They still holding on to their pocketbook. They still using the N word. And guess what? They on drugs more than you. They will give me a green one, Sonny. Give me a blue one. You know what I'm saying? It's just they dope man don't look like our dope man. You know so. Correct. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what's gonna happen is you're gonna get rich against poor. They dope men be and that they dope men are feeding the hood too. That's right. You know, you're going to have Safely. rich against poor in a minute. It ain't going to be white against black. But let me tell you something, man. I support the brother. You know, I, I think he's you standing su- up for what is were right. Were you surprised that a team didn't pick him up? How when you Outside looking in, were you surprised that no NFL team picked up Colin? What did you now, think? Now, I was, I was listening to two European people uh, in the airport today. I was eavesdropping. That's and, a good and, word. Yeah, that's a good word. It kind of keep me out of the fire, but you know what I mean. And uh, uh, and they were saying, well, you know what? They had teams. He just wants $15 million a year. So and that's why he ain't getting signed. It ain't like he's just – so I didn't know what that was. So if he wants a whole lot of money, hey, pay him what he's worth. If he's worth whatever he pay, pay the man. I don't think he's getting an invite. Okay. You know, I, that's what it is? I think he's not even right. – am, am I wrong? I don't even think he's gotten an invite. Right. Okay. I'm hearing rumors right. of not Pat. I, there was a team I did hear that wanted to see him. There was I forgot. This is recently. Which no after the Cowboys. It was someone. It was a. It was it was a smaller team that he was supposed to go to. But recently. you but you support the brother. Absolutely. You know, I, I understand it, was, it. You know. Uh, maybe it was the Jaguars. You're absolutely right. I am. Oh. I, um, hey, don't, come on. I'm you know, super. You know what, man? What, what killed us back in the '90s? It killed us when we was going after each other. You remember? No, that? it was bad. You it was know, bad energy. Yeah, bad. Now you, you know, bad energy. We, it, we, it, we, we find out there's enough to eat for everyone, and you guys are turning around. We doing stuff, and maybe just because we get older, I, you know. I you watched see some. Why. I watched some footage today, Jason, online, of um, uh, 
a, a boy was getting arrested, and I think, did you see it, Ted? It had, like, four cops on him. But, you know, three of the cops didn't do anything wrong. The last cop ran down on him, put the knee in the face, and, and did the elbow on him and the knee in the face. And I was going to post it. I'm still going to post it. Um, I, I am... I have lost some of my friends who are police officers mm -hmm. that, that, that I love. Like we're just we're good friends. Some of us grew up together mm -hmm. because of my opinion on the subject. Mm -hmm. And um, when I watched that again with the, with the boy, you know, I think what's taking me to one of the most horrible places is I know they say it's not all cops, and I agree all police officers, and I think there's several good police officers. I've met many. But in that situation I saw today, if there's three of you and that guy moved like that and no one, I don't, you didn't turn him, I'm not turning him in it, but you didn't stop it. Right. Like, I can't go with, you, you know, you're, you, 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 but it's not you, but you're enabling. Right. You know, you're an enabler because he's okay with it if you guys are okay with it. He ain't okay with it if you're not okay with it. And, and that's the problem not a problem, but it's like I've had good experiences with police officers. Because mm -hmm. for me, I know if I get pulled over, I put my hands on the wheel. Oh, I don't 100. care if you yell at me. I, I don't have the ego thing. Right. With a, because you know what? I want him to protect me as well. Mm -hmm. If I was getting beat up or right. robbed or somebody brought my house, I want him right. to do the same. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be in the neutral zone. But but there's an, there's an issue... And I know we're off topic, but the, you know what the issue is from talking to police officers who confided in me? You could lose your whole pension and your whole thing if you, I don't know, if you if you stumble on $200 that you took off of a dresser. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, if you're, if you're on a case. Mm -hmm. And that's wrong. I don't know if you should lose your pension for that. I don't know if you, should you be punished? Yes. And I think that that thing to protect the job and my way of living they've a lot of them have come together and they don't I don't want to say that they need a better system to govern themselves I think back in the day we hit on it but it was so volatile back in the day when hot 97 used to come into the neighborhood you guys made us feel like a million bucks but you didn't add the police with you now, if you was to throw an event, you say, yo, Jay, you come down. Charles Oakley, come down. You know, let's get some of these old cats, new cats to come down. Hot 97 Flex is here. You know, let's get everybody to come down, and we're going to have the police officers come down, too. We're going to play softball, Good basketball, idea. and then we have it. I'd love to do that, that with you. Let's do it. I'd let's love to do that with you, Jay. Yeah, no doubt. Let's, let's do it. You know, I remember you used to do those events. Yeah, yes, I used to do them. But let Absolutely. me tell you, and you got to learn who – is monitoring your neighborhood. You know, the police force make a bad mistake when they gave away the beat cop. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't, to be honest, I didn't know yeah. they were going. They, they, yeah. That no longer exists. Yeah. Here and there, some yeah. neighborhoods still get They're not it. consistent with it. Yeah, you know what? That beat cop should be swinging that little blackjack and doing them little tricks with it and walking and, and whistling and being nice. And Knew everybody. By, yeah, stop by the park where they're playing basketball and say what's up to these guys. You meet the most popular kid. Now then, it's hey, just hey, a car hey, driving hey, by right. and the eyes. Yeah, just giving you the eyes. You don't know what that looks like. Yeah, but different. a guy on the beat would help you. You know what I'm saying? You know something I'm going to do? I grew up in the 47th precinct. Something you you yeah up in the Northeast Bronx. Mm -hmm. And on my way home, I'm going to stop by there tonight. There you go. I'm going to stop by that 47th precinct in the Bronx, and I'm going to stop by there tonight. I would love to do an event like that. I I'm think in, and I'm already talking love to Charles to. Oakley's in. I'll put Curtis Martin in, and I'll put Antonio Tarver how in, did, Sean uh, C. How did in. Jason Williams yep. feel about the way the garden – treated Charles Oakley. First of all, what was crazy is James Dolan is in the program. He's in recovery. So one thing, rule number one in recovery, well, well, you wait, never, wait, ever, wait. Well, but you never ever go and say that guy is drunk or he needs help in public. What, but what? in three minutes after the thing, three minutes, three minutes after the, uh, uh, the, uh, the fight started, he said, I hope Charles Oakley gets the help that he needed. So he, like, outed him. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. That's my boy. That boy came to see me, you know, once a month in prison. He's the best guy in the world, man. Mm -hmm. I've never seen him drunk. 
And he was right. He sat there, somebody put their hand on him. You know Flex. You sit somewhere and somebody put your hand on it's going to be a problem. There was better ways to ask the legend Charles Oakley to leave than that way. The Dolan thing you just said. Yeah. <laughs> so... See, I can't tell you what he's on because I'm in recovery. No, no, no. But, you but, should not. But, you should not. And I wouldn't point. I wouldn't. I wouldn't point you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait. Whoa. Jason. Jason, give. Wait a minute. So, Dolan, he, he has an he has an addiction issue. I, I see. I've had I'd one. Be yes, because he says it. He says it. Yes, he had. He's in recovery. At this present moment. Yes. Okay, and so so you're saying he shouldn't be projecting that energy. No, nah, you should never go out there and say, hey, this guy is drunk and this guy. That's rule number one. Unless you go and have an intervention with him, you don't go and put his business in the street, not three minutes after it, knowing dang on well Oak wasn't drunk. Mm -hmm. You know? He got to be in recovery. And, or he, no, he ain't even in recovery. He got to be in doing something else. Did you see the team he put together the last 15 years? <laughs> huh? He's high as, he's high as a goat's ass. <laughs> And you know there was so many incident. There was so many places with the Charles Oakley situation for it to tone down. You saw six times where somebody could have just said, "All right, bro, say, I'm gonna leave." Like something. It was like, bro, like what? Well, and Oakley was so old school. Yeah. Because the old school part is even if you have his hand on his shoulder, get away. Yeah. From <laughs> and, 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 and you know what? He non-contact. Like I know a 25. I'm a, I'm a touchy feely guy. You know. I, so every time I forget. We just did a basketball camp, free basketball camp down Riviera Beach, 300 kids. And and Bill Thompson, he's a pastor down there, played with the Lakers. So I said, hey, Bill, all right, let's go take this picture. But I forgot to tell Bill, don't touch Oak, right? Because, you know, <laughs> Oak think anybody played with the Lakers, you know, a little, little, little yeah, whatever, whatever. Little so, yeah, yeah, don't be, don't, don't be touching. So I forgot to say it because all the little kids was grabbing me. So he was like, all right, let's take this picture. And he grabbed Oak by the, by the, by the neck. And Oak was a boof, a boof, two shot. Am I lying, Sean? And he a pastor. And he, Bill Thompson just went down to the ground. Uh, man, man, don't touch me, man, don't touch me. What the hell wrong with you? Two broken ribs on each side, lying, a double. Man. man, it happens all the time, man. Look how we got, Oak? Look how we got to pray. You know, I'm, I pray before every meal. We go to pray, right? And, and we don't, so, so it'd be 10, 12 of us having dinner. And we go by, and you could just see who got to sit near Oak for the prayer. You know, because Curtis Maul, he's going to give the prayer. And whoever's sitting there, Oak, just be sweating. Now, Sean's the third best fighter in the world. And he'd be like, oh, God, I'm sitting there. So, you know, because we got to grab hands. That too? We got to grab hands. Uh, Oak be like to say, all right, we going to pray or what? Right? I said, yeah, we're going to pray. Oak, Oak be like to say, he closes his eyes, right? And he'll put his hands up. So I got my hands up like this, but he got a fist closed, right? And just like, you remember, uh, one the twin powers activate mm -hmm. and just touch. Yo, know, don't don't mess around and grab his whole hand or grab the side Make of the hand. Make him feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Forget you know, it. When people start sweating, they be moving. I gotta go. You gonna pray? Gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. You know. Oh, sit your ass down. We are gonna pray. The Lord will tell you when to go to the bathroom. You know. It just. But he won't. Like he no touchy feely kind of guy. I don't know how he brought up. But one thing you can do with him, you can put his ass in the kitchen. You put him in the kitchen, and he the nicest guy because that's where his comfort level is with his grandmother nice and his mother. Yeah, he love you, man. You talk about you. I, I I I love seeing him, and I enjoy his energy. I mean, listen, Jason, I appreciate your time. Thank you, brother. Uh, you know, we Thanks don't time. we don't do these often, which is uh, a story to tell. And uh, you know, I'm glad that you're able to sit with me for a while. I wish you the best. You deserve the best. Thank you. You know brother. what I mean? You, the Page of Deuce Society. I mean, you you you're you're. Their energy and your willing to give back is amazing. I mean, you always had that. You always had that, and it was it was hard to watch when people forgot that. And I'm, I'm glad they're being reminded of it. And I thanks, wish you the brother. best. I love you, brother. I wish my you man, the best. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. We thanks for it. having me, man. Thank y'all. Now, if y'all th if y'all throwing something down there, mm -hmm. just give me a plane ticket. You got it. We could pick up where we left off. Yeah. <laughs> But you go. But you going to the forty seventh tonight, right? I'm, well, the forty seventh. I'm together. there. Okay, cool. I'm there. I All used right. to play. I used to play baseball. I'm old New York. I used to play for the PAL for the forty seventh precinct, and I, and I haven't been back in a while. And I am going to go because you know what? I'm going to stop complaining. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to stop complaining, and I'm going to make an effort. And I'm going to read. And to a lot of you artists out there, we're going to put something together 
with the police and us and people coming out and Jason, we're going to do something good. That's my man. We're going to do something good. You know what it is.